What's going on fam? It's your boy KP and I'm back with another message. All praise and credit to the Most High God and Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm trying to tell you guys, King Jesus, the greatest one to ever do it. The greatest prophet to ever walk this earth speaking truth. Let's see. Before we begin, if any of you feel compelled to donate to the ministry, there'll always be links in the pinned comment. Um, the top comment under the comments always pin my contact information and the information if you choose to donate. So that'll always be there. Once again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. You're more than welcome to share this video on any of your platforms. Be sure to hit the notification bell also to be notified as new of new videos the moment I put them out. Let's see, what is the name of today's message? The title of today's message is going to be, Am I Praying Correctly? Um, all right, Ken, what does that mean, am I praying directly? All right, first we're going to get into it. Let's see. I'm going to post these scriptures, this uh, set of scriptures, in the description box. So I welcome you to follow along with me as we go through. Today we're going to be going through Matthew 16, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 28. So that's 13 to the end of that chapter. And we're going to be pausing as we go along, so um, pull that up in the description and go ahead and read along with me as we go through because the, we're going to stop, explain some things, bounce some thoughts off, and then keep going. All right, so it says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philipp Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said unto him, some say there are job some say you are John the Baptist, some say Elias, others Jeremiah or one of the prophet or one of the prophets. All right, that is that is clear. So uh, one thing for those of you that have not seen the spiritual realm, there, there's a real key being pointed out here. Um, John the Baptist and King Jesus were, were alive at the same time. But Elias, Jeremiah, I think Jeremiah was, or Elias was a thousand years BC and Jeremiah was like 500 years or 600 years BC. Why with people, and now these are people without spiritual sight, why would people be thinking King Jesus was Jeremiah or Elias? When you think about that, this is, this is something only the Most High God can reveal to you. So when you think about that, think about the other time when, when um, King Jesus, one of the disciples is asking him, and it was like, hey, I thought, I thought uh, Elijah would surely have to come first. And King Jesus was like, I assure you that Elijah has come, but they knew him not. And then the disciples figure out he was talking about John the Baptist. These are spiritual things. And only... A person with true spiritual sight is going to recognize the, the spirit contained within the vessel of God. Um, and there's different levels to anointing. <clears throat> Let's see, how else can I explain this? Just like when, when, when John the Baptist was born and the angel told him he's gonna, that there's going to be a baby born and he's going to come in the spirit of Elijah. Let me, let me say it like this. I want to be careful because a lot of things in churchianity have been distorted that are true but distorted for people to reject them michael the name of the meaning michael the yeah the the meaning of the name michael is he he was like god the name meaning of 
Gabriel is God is my strong man or the right hand of God. So if you think about those two characters in the Bible, which are spiritual, when they, when they mention those, they're talking about angels. They mention spiritual things. If those two characters were, be, were in the flesh, and they're different, Michael and Gabriel are different, but if those two characters were in the flesh, everything's spiritual. All things begin in the spiritual. So there's not going to be a physical equivalent of something that doesn't exist in the spiritual realm. Are you with me? So think about think about that. Michael, he he who is like God, and Gabriel, God is my strong man, or or the right hand of God. If those were, if those two spiritual things, those two angels, had a physical manifestation. Who would they have been in the flesh? All right, so I'm going to keep going. He said unto them, but who, but whom, whom do you say I am? He's asking Peter. And, Peter, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed thou art Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you, but my father, with, which is in heaven. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this, at this point, Simon Peter had been called, right? But he hadn't been chosen. At this point, King Jesus has chosen the son of God. Remember the spirit, the spirit of the, of the, the Holy Spirit had already descended on Jesus like a, like a dove when he came up out of the water, right? That's, that's, the, that's the moment of, of being chose, right? The, the apostles didn't get chosen in, in, in Acts, to the book of Acts, when that, when that same similar moment happened, when the Holy Spirit came down and they were speaking in tongues and all that craziness. That's the moment where the highest anointing fell, fell upon them. All right, we're going to keep going. And I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. All right, there's some key things going on there. And I say unto you, there, thou art Peter upon this rock. I remember when the Most High reveals this kind of stuff to me, it's mind-blowing. Like I've already went over the, the name meanings of Michael and Gabriel. If you look up the meaning of the name Peter, isn't it ironic that the name Peter means rock? Like, this stuff can't be a coincidence. Um, and he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. So he's telling Peter, like, I'm going to choose. You've been, you've been called, but you haven't been chosen yet. I'm going to build my church upon you. Meaning, meaning there's more to come before you will be completely chosen. There's more learning and more things you must go through before the highest level of anointing, apostleship, sonship of the Most High God is bestowed upon you. All right. I will give on you, I will give on to thee the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he charged the disciples that they should tell no man he was the Christ. So pretty much he's telling you like more power is going to come. Yes, you have spiritual sight. You know I was the son of God. He's telling them. He's like, but there's more to come. There's, there's a higher level of power you should be looking forward to receiving. And scripture always matches up with scripture. Like no man can admit Jesus is Lord except by the spirit, right? That's later on, I think, in the book of Corinthians or Timothy. It's the same thing Jesus said. On, certain things only the most high God is going to reveal to you and you're going to be the only one to know them from, from that time forward Jesus showed unto his apostles how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and raised again on the third day then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from me Lord 
this shall not be unto them. And he turned to Peter and, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For you savor the things that for you savor not the things that be of God, but that of men. All right, so look, he's just praising Peter, saying, I'm going to build my church upon you. And then, and then he just rebuked Peter, calling him Satan. So there's one, there's one thing that, that, that stands out to me here. Peter had spiritual sight. Like he knew it was King Jesus in the flesh, but he hadn't received the highest anointing, like apostleship. Where, 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 you, where your mind is totally recal recalibrated and you're able to see God, but you're able to see the calling and the mission God places on the lives of others. Like the apostle, that, that is like the highest form in the kingdom. Like of those five finger, five fold ministries, apostles, prophets, um, pastors, evangelists, and teachers, ministers. You know those five different positions? Apostle's the highest one. Um, but, but, there, but an apostle is also a prophet. You can have a prophet that's not an apostle. You can have a prophet that's not a minister. Or you can have a person that's all of them. Um, so if you think about that, where, uh, where, where Peter, where Peter is, is saying... Where Peter's is pretty much saying, like, after King Jesus said he's going to be killed, and Peter's, like, saying, no, nah, no, nah, we're not having that, we're not having that. So think if King Jesus wouldn't have corrected him, and, and, and Peter went home to pray. Peter, Peter's prayer would have been along the lines of, Father God, please protect Jesus the Christ, and don't let nothing happen to him. That's what, that's what, uh, Peter's prayers would have been, right? Because that's, that's what he was speaking out of his mouth. I don't want anything to happen to you. Because he couldn't see God's will for another person's life. That's what he was lacking. He was lacking that higher level of spiritual sight where he couldn't see what God's plan was, what God's will was. You know, like I always mention, scripture will never conflict with each other. Thy will be done, you know, give us thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's, God, it's about God's will, not your particular will. And let's, let's stop there for a while. So, in all thy getting, get understanding. And I deal with this in... in I'm fortunate to have been through a lot of spiritual pain and had the veil raised on me and seen spiritual things. Therefore, like today, when I go through things and I still go through them, my prayers are not praying for things in the physical realm. I'm going to give you an example of things I see. I see, what, I see people all the time and I get comments and, and I interact with people and they'll say things like, pray for me. Um, pray for me that I find a job. Pray for me that I don't lose my job. Um, I've been to the doctor and I'm waiting on medical tests. Pray the test come back well. And when I pray for them, I pray that God's will be revealed to them. If you think about the life of King Jesus is which, you know, if you're truly chosen by the Most High God or called by the Most High God, you're going to experience a life similar to his. You're going to have to pick up your cross and follow him. You're going to have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I was dealing, so let me tell you, you guys know this from a previous video. I was dealing with extreme physical pain, like being sick. And I never prayed for the pain to go away. Like I prayed for death, right? But when you pray for death, the the way that I the way that I pray and, and the things I've seen in the spiritual realm, 
I'm praying for the death of part of me to die and, and so another part of me can be reborn. Now, had I prayed to be only healed, that, that could have been done and I would have felt better, but I wouldn't have revelation of the root of what the problem was. So I may have been healed for, for a while and then the same problem would, could have resurfaced in my life, right? Because the, the devil, the devil, Satan, he loves making you feel like he went away from you. He'll cause a bunch of torment in your life. And to keep the door open and access to your life, he'd rather back off of you and you not find out what's really happening. That way he can return to you to the same old trick when you haven't conquered that particular area of your life. So, you know, when you pray, I've learned to always pray for understanding. Always pray for some type of knowledge or wisdom of God's will. Always pray for understanding what is the root cause uh, of this tribulation or, or what am I going through or what am I seeing? Um, and, and when you get revealed that type of knowledge, it makes whatever going, you're going through bearable. It makes it bearable. Let me give you an example. When the Most High God opened my eyes, right? I was praying like, God, allow me to see what's going on. I was in so much spiritual pain. Like, God, allow me to see what's going on. And it led to a bunch of things like my vision of the end of the world, a bunch of spiritual things. But, let, but let's, go with the, let's go with my vision of the end of the world. I saw many things coming in advance, one of them being COVID. And now we fast forward. Let's see, that vision is like four years old. So fast forward. I'm sure going through what the world went through this these past three years would have been more difficult for me because I would have not known what God's will was or what the plan was. So I would have had worry. I would have had worry about my children, my grandchildren, like what could happen. But having knowledge of God's will and what's going to be carried out, it doesn't mean the circumstances and the events will not occur. But when you understand why they are occurring, it gives you a certain peace because God has a way of revealing to you that like these things must surely come to pass, but, but you're going to be protected. You know, you're not going to be harmed. Um, so back, so back to my physical symptoms, my physical sickness that I've been dealing with. So I'm praying like, God, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? And then he, he began to provide answers, right? About like my diet and sent me to research a couple things and then being like, do this and you're going to be better, right? So through praying for a revelation of the root, I received the answers to the root cause that will allow that particular door of my life to be shut. And I won't have to deal with that particular issue if I do the things that he told me to. I'm hoping that makes sense, sense for you. Otherwise, you know, Otherwise, when you pray for things in the spiritual realm, like God, heal this, you know, make sure I get this job or, or make sure, make sure my kids end up on this path. You're praying with a, with a selfish, it may not feel like it or may not sound like it, but you're praying with selfish intentions. Your prayer should always be to understand God's will for your life. And that understanding will always provide comfort, even if, even if it doesn't take away the things you are going to have to endure. That's the best way I can explain it. So let's continue, let's continue reading along.
Then Jesus said unto his disciple, As any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. What, for what is, pro, what is a man profited if he shall gain the world but lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then shall, then shall he reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now when I read that, it, it fell right in line with what I, what I was talking about. You know, it's about going through with the mission. It's about when the when the when the spirit of heaviness comes upon you to put on the garment of praise. It's about when you know the mission, or when you know the persecution, or when you know the struggle or when you know why you're enduring something. That understanding, that revelation, will, you, will give you the strength to endure what you're going through and conquer the persecution that Satan has you under. If you think about the story of King Jesus, how when he's saying he's got to be killed and Peter's going, no, no, no. And, and King Jesus rebuked him saying, get behind me, Satan. It's because Peter's, Peter's not wanting any harm to come to Jesus was, was subordinate. It was a selfish reason. Because God had already told King Jesus what his mission was. Now had, now, had Peter known King Jesus' mission that had been revealed to him, he wouldn't have done those things. He wouldn't have said, like, no, nah, this ain't going to happen. You know, he, would, he wouldn't have wanted a different outcome. Remember Moses didn't want to go talk to Pharaoh? Like, I don't want to go up in there. Like, I stutter. I'm not a good speaker. God, God, God's servants, what I'm trying to say to you guys is, is the higher the anointing, the gifts of the Lord are, are without repentance, right? So if God gifts you with an anointing on your life, He's not going to take it back. The higher the anointing, the more things you're going to have to endure to receive it. And there's going to come a moment in your life to where that knowledge is going to be revealed to you that's going to allow you to continue on the path. You know, like me, gang stalking, right? Persecution. It didn't happen in my whole life, but it didn't get revealed to me what it was until age 44. Like I had reached the, the, the finish line of, of you can't persecute me anymore without me knowing what's happening. That's, that's a one way to say, to, to verbalize the moment I got my spiritual sight. I had reached all the persecution one person can take without knowing why. So after that, the persecution increased, but I knew why. And when you know why, it allows you to endure more. I hope this makes sense to someone as much as it makes sense to me. The moral of the story is with all thy getting, get understanding. So when you pray, pray for understanding. 
because that that is that is going to be the renewing of your mind. A person can only make a lasting change when their pers when their perception when they've been given something new, like giving new information, when they've had a new revelation, when there's a new way of thinking. And that is what's going to, that revelation, that wisdom, right? Like Solomon, he didn't, he didn't pray for a bunch of like money and stuff. He prayed for wisdom. Yeah, he was rich as all get out. But 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 look at but look that up. He found favor in the in the sight of God because he prayed for wisdom. He didn't pray for for something physical. And and the spiritual the spiritual things are always higher than any physical. A lot of people pray for money, right? They're praying for money. They're praying for a new car. They're praying for a job. They're praying for things like that. But if you prayed for like wisdom, you could, with the right wisdom, you could create something or set the balls in motion in the physical realm that would give you a lot of money. Wisdom, right? All things begin in the spiritual realm. So pray for wisdom and understanding. Prayers are really asking God for something, right? Prayers are really asking God for something. And when you ask God for something, you should... You should be expecting to hear something back. I guess that means I'm right, right? You heard the horn outside. <laughs> so prayers are asking, but expect to hear something back. Most people are busy talking to God, but they don't listen very well. It's more important that you hear from him like, what he say to you is going to be a lot more valuable than anything you could say to him. I hope that makes sense. But until next time, fam, leave a comment below. Let me know if anything made sense to you. If, if something didn't make sense, tell me that also. My contact info will be below. The donation links will be below in the pinned comment. But that's all I got for today's message. I pray all of you receive some type of understanding. Increased knowledge of God's will for your life. And with that, I'm out. Till next time, stay equipped in the full armor of God covered with the blood, filled with the spirit, in the name of the Son, and the power of the true living God. Until next time, I'm KP, and I'm out. Peace.